If you're watching this video, you're probably a Canadian considering medical school abroad. Maybe you've researched the pros and cons and decided that it's something that you're able to handle. I'm going to tell you why you should give international medical schools one more thought before you buy that plane ticket. If you're new to the channel, my name is Danny Kalani. I'm a second year medical student in Canada. On this channel, I make videos giving advice on how to get into medical school in Canada and I also give some insight into my personal experiences as a Canadian who's gone to medical school. While applying for my undergraduate degree in Canada, that was when I was in high school, I strongly considered going off to the United Kingdom or the Caribbean for medical school. The reason I even considered these options was because I wanted to go to medical school directly. I didn't want to have to wait to go to medical school after doing an undergraduate degree and I wanted to avoid that uncertainty of getting into medical school while studying for my undergraduate degree. While thinking about where I wanted to do my degree, I was doing some pretty heavy research into what the implications are for going to medical school abroad. In the end, I decided against going to an international medical school. In this video, we're going to get into why. The first and probably the biggest barrier to going abroad for medical school is going to be the enormous tuition. As a student at most international medical schools, you should expect to be paying international student tuition, which tends to be significantly more than what a domestic student at that university would pay. On top of that, the Canadian dollar has weakened over the past 10 years, so there's going to be a premium to pay if you want to study abroad. For the sake of an example, I'll show you how much it costs to go to one of the programs that I considered going to. That program is called the Scottish Canadian Program. The program involves going off for three years to study at the University of St. Andrews, where you'll be doing a Bachelor's of Science in Medicine. Then you go to do your clinical training at the University of Edinburgh, for another three years to complete your degree. Each year at St. Andrews will cost you around $57,000, assuming the Canadian dollar is at what it currently is, and that tuition rises aren't going to be happening for the next three years. Then the last three years in Edinburgh will cost you approximately $86,000, that's Canadian dollars, Per year. At the end of the six years, that's going to be a total of 429,000 Canadian dollars. And that doesn't even include your living expenses or the cost to fly out to Scotland. Just so you're aware, both programs are quite highly ranked globally, but that does come at a price. Some medical programs will be significantly cheaper than this, but the quality of their programs is probably going to decrease quite a bit. This program has probably some of the best integration with Canadian medical training, which should theoretically make it easier to come back to Canada. However, it's hard to say how well the advantages of this program will actually translate into real world student success. If you're still not convinced that $429,000 is a lot for a medical degree, I'll just point out that the average Canadian medical graduate ends up with around $165,000 in debt by the end of medical school. That number includes both medical school tuition expenses as well as living expenses. Even if money isn't a barrier for you, there are still a few other things that you need to consider. Living away from home isn't easy, especially when we're in a pandemic and traveling back home across international borders may mean spending 14 days in quarantine. With the trend of the pandemic being as unpredictable as it is, I'm not too sure how much longer governments will require quarantine after international travel. Hopefully you've also spent some time away from friends and family, living abroad or living in a different city, as that experience is going to give you a good indication of how you respond to homesickness. With the now obvious costs of medical training abroad, you probably want to know what the payoff is. Many countries, such as Canada and the United States, won't allow a medical graduate to practice without first going through postgraduate medical training, which you probably know as residency. If you're considering going abroad, 
you need to know where you'll be able to pursue a postgraduate medical residency. A good number of countries won't allow international graduates, those that graduated from their medical schools, to pursue postgraduate training in their country. For example, when I got an interview for the Scottish Canadian program that I was telling you about earlier, they required that I sign a contract stating that I would not pursue postgraduate medical training in the United Kingdom after I graduated. Whether the medical schools that you're considering applying to and attending have this policy is something that you should be aware of, since it's going to impact your ability to actually work with the degree after you graduate. If you're not able to pursue this training internationally, then you'll have to match into a Canadian residency program. To even participate in the Canadian matching process, which is commonly called CARMS, you will first have to show that your education stacks up to the Canadian standards. This involves taking a couple tests, namely the National Assessment Collaboration Exam or NAC exam, and one of either of the Medical Council of Canada Evaluating Exam or MCCEE, or the Medical Council of Canada Qualifying Exam Part 1, or MCCQE Part 1. Even with your degrees and exams completed, you're still not considered the equivalent of a Canadian medical graduate. Instead, you'll be considered an international medical graduate, which has some implications. In 2020, 29% of international medical graduates that applied for a residency position in Canada were successful. That number is compared to 96% for Canadian medical graduates. It may also be more difficult to match to specific specialties, especially ones where there are few or no spots allocated to international medical graduates. If you're set on doing a residency in neurosurgery, ophthalmology, cardiac surgery, or even general surgery, you're probably better off pursuing medical school in Canada. Most international medical graduates that match will end up in either family medicine or internal medicine, just like their Canadian graduating colleagues. Before making your decision, I suggest that you do way more research. You shouldn't make this decision lightly, especially when it could be costing you up to half a million dollars. You should also be aware of sources of information especially when they're coming from consulting companies or from international medical schools that are for profit, such as many of the Caribbean medical schools. They are generally going to try and paint a picture that is either prettier or uglier than reality to try and entice you to use their services. With that said, thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.